So, um, so get to to get the conversation started. So maybe um, you can tell us a little bit more about what Ava is doing, because I'm sure there are many people in the audience who have never heard about Ava, but we're going to change that now. And also um, about the term of what does deep tech actually mean? Of course, yeah. Um, so. Um, Ava, like we, we refer to it usually with a met metaphor of like being the weather forecast, but not for rain or snow, but for public safety. Um, so like, like in, in meteorology, um, Ava is collecting a lot of data, like from real-time sources, from uh, historical data, etc., etc. Sensors that are being deployed in cities and smart cities, um, and they all provide a lot of value that we actually use to calculate um, safety for locations. So um, this could mean like if let's say a weather catastrophe is, is coming around, like we can try to gather this very early and, and inform people in the area. But also like um, if you're a, travel for, a traveler, for example, and you don't know your way around, historical data can actually um, uh, tell you which areas are at certain points of the day a little bit more sketchy without needing you to fear about like, um, um, like that, that you run into a group of pickpockets, or etc. Um, but even more important is, is really real-time information. So, like, let's say someone pulls a gun somewhere outside, and we are just in the course of moving out here into this uh, after this wonderful conference. Um, like, what would be our way to be informed about this? Um, and like, there, are, like, people usually um, nowadays uh, have a lot of ways to communicate such information. Be it social media, um, etc., etc. Our systems would be able to pick this this signal up and inform us here in t uh, within this room uh, through our smartphones, for example, um, and give us the warning to stay a little bit longer in this place until the situation out there um, resolves and is, is getting better. So it's actually an app that I can download uh, on the App Store and then use it? That was actually the, the initial idea to provide this as, as an app uh, for everybody to download. Um, while developing the algorithms, we discovered that it can be used for so many more applications. And um, um, so right now we are talking with industry partners like DHL, uh, for example, who have huge amounts of data themselves to together whether they are routes that they are driving on a daily basis um, are safe for their drivers. And um, so, like, uh, we use machine learning algorithms for, actually for to helping them find the relevant information, all the intelligence that they receive, um, and to inform them. Another use case could be, for example, um, like TUI, a huge um, travel organization that probably a lot of you actually know. Um, they um, they actually have apps for their clients where Ava can be just embedded. And so, like, if you are getting off board of a cruise ship, for example, in a port somewhere where it's usually beautiful, um, but then like some sort of catastrophe happens, um, TUI, by the means of Ava, actually has the ability to make sure that their tourists and clients stay safe and travel. So. And I know there are some uh, showcases where Ava has actually um, proven to be life-saving. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more of these. Yeah, actually, actually um, uh, we had a situation very early on while we were still um, like in, in the test phases. Um, it was uh, during the, uh, the last terror attack in London um, at the Westminster Bridge. Our system picked up signals um, about the shooting several minutes before the police started to report about this to the public. So like, if we were deployed at that moment, we could have like, given people around the area four to five minutes um, of time to, with a clear mind still, n decide whether they go into the street or get like, close into that area or stay away from it. And like, a couple of minutes really can make a change in such situations, as you know. Well, well. well. Really, really good. Um, so um, we see that artificial intelligence is actually an, an amazing tag that keeps us safe by um, examples like that. But what about the aspects, the negative aspects that come along with artificial intelligence? I mean, here speaking of robots taking our jobs, um, I'm thinking of uh, surveillance data. I know especially Germans uh, don't like to be monitored. I don't want to be my eyes being tracked in the metro. So maybe you can tackle a little bit. Uh, on that aspect. Yes, yes of course. Um, so like we really understand what it means, like the, the privacy aspects of, of what we are doing. So um, like we, are, we are talking about trust. Safety is, is, is a trust issue as well. Um, and um, so like we really thought about how, can, how we can we tackle this and like we knew that like the GDPR uh, was coming like uh, even like when we were starting about this and so we really thought about like maybe we can be even a benchmark 
for taking this very seriously and like what we what we actually focus on in terms of data is we are, to, we, are we are focusing on the on the incident data we are not to, uh, focusing on the person that is behind it uh, we can warn people without actually knowing who they are um, you know we can we can uh, um, we can. We, we don't need to have any, any face recognition or anything. Like if, if someone starts a fight, then the fight is the thing that, that is relevant for the people to be informed about, not who these people actually are. Uh, we get a lot of requests though from 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 government agencies, to, like whether we can support in this. But we have a clear line there that we say, okay, we don't cross this privacy issue aspect. And um, I think this is this is a benchmark that other companies also like in this field um, should take very seriously when, when they really want to build trusted relationships with their clients. And um, where do you actually get your data from? Um, the data we get like, from, from various sources. We started with social media, which is publicly available, of course. Um, we uh, embrace, of course, all the cities that put data like from, from open city initiatives online. Um, but we also partner with, uh, with cities for like in certain cases where they say, okay, we don't want to publish all the details about the, the information to the public, but they give us access to the data because we don't, we use it for just for, for aggregation and, and analytics, um, not to really like give it out to, to third sources. So we are in partnerships with, 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 with corporate clients and with cities. For example, the city of London is one of our, uh, one of our clients now. And, um, and yeah, this is, this is where, where the sources come from. So we actually have to make sure at DLD to introduce you to many more cities like Munich or yeah. uh, Berlin. Belgrade. Be Belgrade? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody from Belgrade from the government here? So um, yeah, so we see it's actually really tech for good. Um, what does AVA actually stand for? Oh yeah, Because I question. think it's a very, very positive name. That is true. Um, and uh, by a purpose, like it was really purposeful that we chose this name. Like we, we knew that what we are doing um, for many people maybe create concerns. Um, we use a lot of data, big data, as you just said. Like we use artificial intelligence. We use tracking al algorithms. But actually, we are just there to um, to make life very free. To you know, like we we want to take care of the burden of like all the the problems that are out there, and really want to provide uh, peace of mind to people. So for us, it was really important to to choose a name that wouldn't scare them away. And. <laughs> Um, by, by Ava, we really thought about it for, for a long time. Um, it, it, these are warm sounds, they work in all languages, um, they sound very positive. Um, and you know, you know Alexa, you know Siri, those are all female <laughs> versions of, of, of artificial intelligence. Um, and after all, um, Ava is, is, is a form of Eve, um, which is the, the, by the meaning like, of life and bringing the life, protecting the life. So we see ourselves very well covered with this as well. Um, okay, moving from um, Ava and deep tech um, to actually the ecosystem of Serbia. I mean, we've we've heard many many great things throughout the whole day about the positive or thriving Serbian ecosystem. And um, so, why did you choose Serbia and uh, Novi Sad as as the city for R and D over Berlin? So, mm -hmm. just to um, explain uh, in terms of your background, you're from Berlin, but you're now based and you founded the company here in Novi Sad and your co-founder Alexander um, is actually Serbian and is now based in Berlin so true. how is that coming together because you know there are so many great developers also in Berlin so could you could have easily founded the company there yeah. So we knew that this, what we are doing is, is about a huge challenge and uh, we, we actually bootstrapped the first phase of our company. Um, so like, it was really about to, um, maximizing the odds of being successful. And so what we needed were like really skilled people who can work us with these like challenging technological problems. And of course we could have done this, try to do this in Berlin, um, but uh, of course labor here is, is on the one hand cheaper. That's, that's definitely one thing. It, like, it gives us more runway, but like um, for us we also discovered that it's not just cheap labor, it's very skilled labor, it's very passionate labor, and we, we discovered like like I would say now we have a network of friends here um, of people who are very enthusiastically working on this project together with us 
And um, so from that perspective, like this was a, was a complete success story for us being here and for me living here now. Yeah. And when we talked before, you said it's an honor uh, to work in Serbia. And I thought that was, that was very, very nice. It you? is, it is. As if you, like, it, like I came here as a foreigner, even though my, my co-founder is, is half Serbian. Um, so I was, I was welcomed so warmly here and I have had no issues in these, in these three and a half years that I'm actually most of the time living here with the, with the tech team, mm -hmm. uh, with the R&D team. Um, like I, I cannot be more grateful for, for this opportunity and um, it, was, it was great to hear also what Anna Banovic uh, earlier said. Um, I can clearly see these developments that, that she was talking about mm -hmm. and, um, and as, she, as she ended her speech with like, welcome to Serbia, I, I really felt welcome in Serbia all the time. So I, ha I can only thank Serbia for, for this. Yeah. And you're hiring at the moment, right? Yes, we are hiring. Our, our team is, is luckily scaling very much. Um, we have had like, a very successful financing round. Uh, we will go into another financing round soon. Um, but we are, uh, right now we have a, a huge demand from, from corporate clients and cities. And uh, in order to cope with this and to fulfill on this, uh, we are hiring talents uh, in Serbia. And data scientists, or what do you need, or what are you looking for? Oh, like the full range. Like we, we have data science um, that positions that we have open. We have uh, develop DevOps position. We have backend developers. Um, uh, anybody who is really interested and passionate about it. Um, we we earlier heard um, that you cannot buy like really skills. You know, like it's the combination. And what we are doing is actually so new that there are not so many people who have so much experience in this field. So what really counts for me is like whether this person fits into the team, has the right motivation and the enthusiasm to work on this project and uh, is willing to, you know, to, to, to take the steps from, from his side. And this is what we found so far. Currently our team is completely organically grown, so everybody was recommended through a friend, through a friend, through a friend. Um, and by the way, this is also something that I can just recommend for anybody considering coming to Serbia. Take some time, make friends and, and start from there to hire your team. Yeah, that's what, what we've also experienced um, when organizing the DLD conference here in Serbia, that it's uh, such an open-minded country. So I mean, It was so helpful, wonderful working with the government, and uh, that was really actually an easy, easy thing. <laughs> um, so what would you say in your opinion, or in your German opinion, what's the secret sauce of Serbia? I think the secret sauce is really the, the passion on the one hand. Um, like. The people that I work with, they are really longing for challenging projects. And um, I've worked with technology teams in, in, in Germany as well. Um, what I found there, like I, I mean, I, I loved everybody who I talked with, uh, who I worked with. But um, like, there's there's some more of a saturation there. Like the, the job is more like a job, while here it is more like I really want to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And like at least on a, on a broader level. And I think this is something that, that uh, enables Serbia to actually reach these goals that, that, we, that we see here and um, embodied by this conference as well, to really go, go to become a, a tech lead uh, mm -hmm. nation. Yeah. Did you discover any or experience any barriers when you set up the company here in Serbia? Um, Maybe it, also as a hint for other entrepreneurs who yeah, want to start a company suggest or recommend for anybody who wants to start here you know try to to get in contact um, with like a good accounting company that can support you um, what was for us a little bit difficult is that the 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 regular language here is not just serbian but like the written language is in cyrillic so like any any documents that i that i get from the tax authorities uh, i definitely have to pass on to someone else mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually founding a company is easy but you need to have someone who can help you with this. So um, get, a, get a lawyer, not for your protection, but just to, like, to, to take the right steps. Get a good accountant. Um, I think this is, these are the few only things that you really need to take care of, and um, then you're good to go. Okay. Um, so we are almost out of time, so um, I would like to finish our uh, little conversation. As you have such, such a huge amount of data at Ava, um, we, you need to predict something. <laughs> <laughs> for me. So when do you think is uh, Serbia going to leapfrog in Europe? Oh, <laughs> I, like, like, uh, like by my own experience and that if I take this as the data, I would really say that uh, Serbia is, is, is about to, to really take this step to become very, very loud in this, uh, in this, uh, in this field. And um, I think this conference here also shows this. Um, like you, you are reaching out because you became aware of this 
powerful ecosystem and like and the, and it's still just a small seed um, but you have very like you have a lot of, of, of seeds here and a lot of people that just need a little bit of water and a little bit of sun and uh, I think yeah, nice description it will take a, it will take a, a, a huge step like um, it would be great. Okay, so I leave this to Steffi uh, to tell us if we're going to be back next year. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Sasha, for this conversation. I think you're truly a role model. Please make sure um, to talk to him today or at the party tonight. And uh, perfect. it's perfect. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much.